it's it's a time where black people are celebrated our heritage everything that we've given to society that hasn't necessarily given back to us it's a time to for us to remember and like celebrate and empower ourselves in those moments so for black history month it was only one month of the year unfortunately but it's a time for us to feel empowered again to get us through the next couple months um black history to me is celebrating the culture the success the journey um the trials and tribulations that we've had to overcome as a as black people and to me that's what uh black history month stands for black history month means uh everything to me about celebrating our success of uh, things that we've done in either our communities or anything around the united states uh, like patty said like it's one month out of the year where we feel like we can be really noticed for all of If I had the chance to even meet with Henry, I would want to give him a, a great hug. Um, you know, he broke down the barrier uh, in the hockey world uh, for us to play the sport. Um, you know, not see a lot of good black kids playing hockey, especially where I'm from in Oakland, California. And, you know, if I was to see him, I would like to thank him from the bottom of my heart because he's done wonderful things for us. That's a great question. I would definitely love to see Jackie Robinson and I would thank him from the bottom of my heart because I remember reading a book in high school about the things that he had to go through playing professional ball and you know it's just not it's, it wasn't an easy road for him so being able to tell him thank you I appreciate what you did to pay the way for guys like Frankie guys like Aaron guys like me um, it just really means a lot I have to thank both Jackie and what they've done for not just black people but for their own sports. Um, I think it gets overlooked a lot of how those two have had such a footprint on both the sports that they've played in baseball and hockey and it, it gets overlooked because they are black so it's always just a conversation of like the first black to do this or the first black to do that but Willie was playing with like one eye and made it to the NHL other guys had two and couldn't crack, you know, and he had to battle that stuff. Jackie had to battle a lot more than people really know about. Um, and fortunately for baseball, it's taken uh, strides in the right direction to follow up after, and hockey's either late, slow, or not doing it as of yet, so I'd probably apologize to him. Honestly, I would want people to know that I did everything I could to make it where I am. You know, I'm from Fayetteville, North Carolina. I could have played hockey, I could have played basketball, I could have played football, I could have played baseball, but, you know, I chose the hockey route. It wasn't the easiest route, but um, I'm glad I chose it. And as far as my legacy, what I want to give back, um, I really would like to see other young kids, you know, it doesn't matter what color they are, but I just want to see other kids get into hockey and have the same passion and love for it that I do. And if I can do that, as far as giving back, then I feel like I've done my job. For me, uh, being from Oakland, uh, a lot of my kids played other sports, and I was one of the kids that kind of stood out, and I always loved hockey. Uh, I always was that type of kid that wanted to see other black kids play hockey and growing up I would always go back home and help kids from either the projects or kids from low income areas and I would try to help them get to hockey and for me it brings a joy and a, a smile on my face because like, I get to see them do the things that I got to do when I was younger so I really could care less about my legacy because I've had a long trip and I've never given up, but I always want to give back to those kids, especially when I get older and I see myself in 
need help with them out, whether it's coaching or um, whether it's just advising kids to like push them into the right directions. I think it's a nice pat on the back um, for people to notice what you do um, with regards to like leaving a legacy or a footprint somewhere. But I don't necessarily care too much about that. Um, I would rather people become inspired to be active in joining in what we do. Um, with me specifically, I come from a rough neighborhood in Toronto, which predominantly like ethnic minorities, um, single parent homes, subsidized housing, like gun violence, stuff like that. And there were a lot of like black and brown Asian kids who wanted to play hockey and they just couldn't afford it, couldn't do it. And I was like one of the few lucky ones. Um, so now I work with the Time to Dream Foundation and with the HCA to help kids who don't come from a socioeconomic background that enables them to do whatever they want to do, to dream big and like go after it. Um, and so we're helping out with that, we're helping out with um, ethnic minorities being able to do it. And so I just want people to see that there's work being done and I want them to join in with the fight. I don't want them to just acknowledge me and be happy about what I'm doing. I want to inspire them to join in and do the same thing with me. I just feel like everyone is like wishing the best maybe, but nobody wants to put in the legwork. Like it's, it's like, you know, there's that person in your class that you're not really friends with and they might be going through some tough times and you hope like things work out, but like you don't really go over and like, what can I do to help? And even if they tell you you're not gonna go do it, you know what I mean? Like I, I feel like there's too many people like that who are just passive amidst like all this stuff being thrown at them. They just kind of, whether they're um, ashamed of it, so they don't want to take part in it or they just don't know how to start. I just, I don't, I don't know what it is, I don't know what you I think, um kind of goes back to one of the questions about giving back because you also mentioned how much of a financial burden you hockey can be like you know I know um, so it's tough so I feel like other sports when it comes to soccer basketball football you can literally go to like certain places and they will give you equipment they'll give you pads they'll give you shin pads they'll give you jerseys socks whatever you need but that same type of system doesn't work for hockey. So as far as low-income families being able to, you know, at least get the proper equipment, there needs to be some type of system set up where the stuff is more attainable for them. Right, I'll agree with you because I feel like hockey is it's very expensive. I know growing up, being a goalie, gear is too expensive. Um, I think youth programs need to figure out a way to make hockey more financially stable Whether it's like get them a free season or like, hey, say we're gonna cover you for this year. And I feel like with other sports, like you see, they have scholarships and things like that. Like the hockey, you don't really get that at the youth level. Um, and I feel like some organizations, they either they don't care or they're trying to buy into it, but they're just doing it for the wrong reasons. And I feel like more organizations need to like start caring about. I actually agree with you, especially on that last point, because I've been a part of a process of trying to make hockey more affordable for kids who can't afford it, and I've seen people like look them in the face and they've been like, yeah, you know, we're behind this, and then when we finally got to a point where like the seeds were producing some sort of fruit and that we can actually like put in these initiatives that we come up with, they were like against it because then they felt like their pockets were gonna get hurt because of what we were doing. Right. So it's just like, I don't know if it's the specific type of people in hockey. I don't want to label all of them that way because I've definitely met good people in hockey, right. especially in this organization. But I just feel like there's too many like selfish money driven people in hockey. And I think like that old guard, that old country club style way of thinking to just like go out like we need to like flush 
a certain group of people out and bring in like fresh new faces who may not know too much about hockey, but it might be a good thing. But they don't know like what you've been through or know what you've been through. But the thing is, we don't have to ask each other like what we've been through. Yeah. We know. You know what I mean? But other people who are not us, like even black people who are not in hockey, some of them don't know. So literally this is like a, it's a very small group of people who know what's going on. Um, so growing up in the South, you know, obviously hockey was um, the last thing on anybody's mind. So I didn't learn how to skate until I was 10 years old, which was pretty late. But once I did actually get into the rink and people saw, I was always a big kid, people saw how big I was. It was always, you know, why don't you play football? Why don't you play basketball? Like, why don't you try something else where, like, you can use your size? And it may not sound, uh, I don't want to say racist, it may not sound offensive, but to me, as a young black kid, wanting to try something new and feeling like it's for me to be deterred away by people who are just judging me on my size and maybe physical ability is, is not the way to go about things. So, like, I had to deal with that pretty much my whole youth hockey, you know, why are you here? You know, you should be on the football field doing this, you should be catching the basketball. But I stuck with it, and if I had to say something to people who don't look like me, it's just don't judge a book by its cover. You know, I know plenty of people who don't look like me that I became best friends with, and vice versa. So if if you're in something to help someone, help them. Don't judge them by how they look. It's funny you say that about the whole football basketball thing because I know you've got it. Yeah. And I've got it. I've gotten it in youth hockey in Canada, which is like, you know, the most liberal, multicultural, especially Toronto, the most diverse city in the world where you don't think you would face that stuff constantly, but it happens in hockey. And then I faced it. I, I don't know. It's probably easier to count how many rinks I've been in where people haven't said a comment like, wrong sport at, well, this isn't basketball. Or, you know, um, even if they say it in a nice way, like those microaggressions out of ignorance, you know what right. I mean? But they don't get, like, how on a daily basis hearing that constantly. It just, it's like jabs, man. Like, it adds up. It affects us. It's, um, it's bad enough to know that we're starting off at a starting line behind everyone else, but then there's more hurdles in front of us at the same time too, you know what I mean? And like, yeah, we could have picked up other sports, like I was athletic, I could have played basketball and football, but I, I loved hockey, so why should I not be able to do something? Because Tom, Dick, or Harry doesn't like how I look. They think I don't fit. Um, and I'm lucky I came from the household I did, and you guys the same way, where we could like push past the random messages from fans or the things they say and yell at us or getting stuff thrown at us being spit on um, like these are all things that happen a lot more often than people think and even at this level in this league shoot last season like, I had someone spit on me I had people yell stuff at me like it, from grassroots up it's the whole culture I think I would like to teach kids at a younger age too and tell them like if you're really into this like, you're going to go through things because I think my parents kind of tried to shelter me a little bit so I didn't get involved into like hearing what other people would say or, um, or do but I can remember the look on my mother's face when I was at a tryout and I left my old team where there were six black kids out for a new team and one of my old teammates and parents came up to my mother and was talking about the whole situation with the new team and the comment that he made I didn't think about it at the time but looking back at it now I was like I wish I could have said something differently or I wish I could have known what he had said and how it was going to affect me and he basically said well Frankie can go back to Oakland and it was kind of 
have a job because the one team I was going to didn't have any black kids on it. It's like, oh, he belongs there. And basically, yeah, I was basically saying that I belong on that team. But I feel like a lot of people, I think they get threatened when they see a black kid playing a sport that you don't see predominantly a lot of blacks playing. Yeah. And I was always looked at differently growing up. Like every week I went to, I always got looked at weirdly. Um, I always got looked at on the ice, especially when I went for a trial. I felt like I was being judged right away. And then after a couple of like ice sessions, like people would come up and talk to me, and some of the kids would talk to me. And they're like, "Oh, you're, you're you're not bad." I wish I could just tell kids to don't judge so quickly because like I can be the greatest person. I will always respect a person, but people are very quick to judge. In on. Funny you say that about like you know black people being intimidating in sports that they don't normally get in. So I get it a lot. You know, as soon as I tell someone I play hockey, it's automatic. Oh, you're the fighter. You must be the fighter. Yeah. Look how big you are. Like, and yeah, I will fight if I need to. But that stigmatism on me for being my size and playing this game where they allow you to fight always puts me in that category of being a fighter. You know, you know what though? I don't even think it's so much height. I think it's more just color. Because I get the same things that you get. And I'm five foot nine, five foot nine. People like people mistake me for this guy all the time. You know what I mean? People mistake me for you. Yeah, at like the time we're man. all like different sizes, heights, yeah. like we don't look the same at all, like you know what I mean? But the whole concept of judging us like you know when you walk into a trial you know you're the only black person who's going to be there and you know that when you show up one everyone's going to look at you in the room they're going to be like who is this and like oh is this guy any good like we always have something to prove and then we surprise people and after we surprise them they judge us again and then it's like this never-ending struggle of like being judged having to prove them wrong being judged again anyways having to prove them wrong it's like we're never good enough and you know it's funny though we played against each other for how many years now? And this is the first time I think we're all on the same team because I knew you back about five, six years ago. I remember meeting you like four years ago. I like, guess the first time we're all on the same team, but you know, like we're still going. You know, like that's that speaks volume that we are still going. Like it's not that we're not capable of moving up, like we choose to like be here, we choose to get better and better. So that speaks well. Well, I'm not going to let, you know what? So growing up, um, I played against P.K. Suba. And I remember his mom looking at my family, and I was there too after one of our games. And she looked at me, and she's like, don't let anybody stop you from doing what you love. They're going to try. You know they're going to try. You know everything. Like, we used to get, like, my parents just give me the talks, like, it's, it's a tough decision with parents, right? They either choose to shelter you from it or like, hey, this is how it is. And I got that this is how it is. And so Maria Suvan was like, yo, it's gonna happen, but like, don't let anyone stop you. So I'm just, I stuck with that. Like, if I wanna play, like, I'm not gonna let any man or person or woman make me stop playing if I wanna play. And that's why I'm still here, because I feel like I wanna play. But it would have been easy to just like quit a long time ago or pick up another sport. Else. But I feel like people, they do things and they say things because A, they're intimidated, B, they want, they want to get a reaction out of you, and C, they want to push you to the, your breaking point where you want to quit because they don't want you around, basically. Yeah. And, you know, for us to just keep going, I've had things happen to me, especially in Canada at 17. Uh, I remember a guy was on the bench and he was making a, like a monkey noise and then he skated front of me making a monkey noise and I see their coach laughing and I remember breaking down and screaming in the intermission and all I just remember was a couple of my coaches and teammates were like we're gonna go get that guy and I was like I don't need you to do this for me like I can do my own talking on the ice so it's nice to have that backup but they don't know what you're going through that happens. They don't and like to be honest you can't expect them to right like I think there are good parts where 
you know, you'll have teammates who stick up for you. But generally speaking, we're like pretty good teammates, and that's probably why they stick up for us, you know what I mean? But, yeah, it is, it is different. Like, you're alone. You're alone all the time. Like, it's, being in this situation is a blessing. Like, I know I've played with other black players before, and so I've been lucky to have had that opportunity. But for most of my life, I did it, you know? And it's, it's tough. It's tough, because even if they're behind you, it's it's not like one of you being behind me because I know you guys get exactly what it is I'm going through. But I like we appreciate it. I'm not and I don't want them to stop doing it. I want them to be awesome teammates. Um, I just wish like people outside of the locker room were the same. And unfortunately they're not. Well, people outside the locker room do to me. Um, well, one, I feel like my teammates might have more of a chance and they're more inclined to because that's just the nature of a hockey team. Um, and so there, there's stuff that happens every shift where, like, a teammate can go in, in retaliation, you know, um, and do something. But when it comes to, like, racial stuff, it's, uh, when it does happen, it's pretty much out in the open if it's on the ice. And if we say, like, this happened, like, the boys' natural instinct is to defend their team, you know? But it's not, like, from that same viewpoint that we would have. So people outside, um, they don't really have the opportunity to physically do things at times. Um, and I feel like they don't know what to do if that does happen. And some of them are just like, you know what, like, I don't want to, like, make this worse, or, like, I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to stay out of it. And there's, so there's a lot of, like, staying out of it, or, like, you know, I never really knew that. That's, like, pretty cool. But then, you know, they go home and they're living happy because they said whatever they said to me. But they don't have to... They don't have to take it home. we got to take it home. Our kids are going to have to take it home. Like, our parents take it home. Our families take it home. They don't have to take it home. So, for them, they don't really have to invest in it. But I feel like um, people outside the game, it's important for them, if they have the chance, to get to know the players. If you get to know the players on a personal level, then you can judge them on a personal level. But to watch us play games, we have practices, seeing us you know, at the bar after the game, you're not really gonna get a good hold on who this person is you know, as a, as a man. So I feel like getting to know someone and then putting a label on them, even though you shouldn't label anybody, but getting to know someone and then assessing your judgment I feel like is the way to go from an outsider's perspective. I mean, I feel like hockey is so, it's so closed off, so I feel like the fans don't get to really know who we are, even though we have all these things where we have skate with the fans or like skate with the kids or like host an event. A lot of people, like, or some, some are friendly, they come up and talk to us and we have like a deep conversation but it's not about the things that we go through. It's about what goes on on ice or like what we do in our spare time. They don't actually ask us certain questions of like, well, we can't expect them to ask right. us those questions. But I think, well, look at other sports relative to hockey, right? If you look at like soccer, basketball, look at LeBron James. Man, like, look at this guy. He comes from a single parent home, low income, like he beat all odds. But here he is, and like the NBA is like, yeah, this is what it's about. Or like you can see the same thing in soccer. Like this kid from Africa had no shoes on his feet. Now look at what he's done for himself. Like he's defeated all odds. But then like you look at hockey, and it's like, good old Canadian boy, good old American boy. His dad used to play. His mother does this. It's always like trying to paint this pretty little picture of this family with a big house and a big fence and a big yard with a dog, and like they never really want to talk about, address, or promote somebody who's not of that same cloth. And so I think it starts with them. Like, hockey players, generally speaking, because of how, like, hockey's done things, hockey players are boring. No one knows anything about hockey players. They just think, like, oh, they fight, you know, they drink beers, they like women, and, you know, they come for money. Yeah. They're going to have a good life. Like, I that's... Like, I feel like we're so closed off, you know, we get yeah. to show out as much as other sports do. 
how many famous hockey players do you know have they ever talked about like yo he comes from like low income he's done this he's done that like maybe as of late but over the history of hockey like it I almost seems it almost seems frowned upon yeah in sport. yeah they don't they don't want people like that in the sport and they don't want to promote that about their sport it's like it's like a small country club yeah it's like they're grasping onto the last sport left that's like still this way whereas like every other sport Look at like the country club sports, Tiger Woods in golf, the Williams sisters in tennis, or coming in swimming. Like literally every sport that black people, ethnic people decide to do, we're good at it. And like just naturally so. And I think that's something that should be celebrated, not held back. Right. Like, yo, you embrace this, you take from it, and then you move on. Like look at how hip hop is. Look at how many white artists are now in hip hop doing well. Because they've embraced black people doing and like, yo, this is cool. Like, let me do this too. Let me learn from it. Let me study. Let me figure this out because I don't know where to go. But we don't do that in hockey. I think there's two th three things. One, right now, it's a time where, like, this is an actual discussion in homes. And so I think now it's up for people to, like, reach out and actually have open dialogue with people of color, people who are not of color about this issue. Um, because that's the only way you're really gonna learn. Like if you don't talk about it, if you don't, like how are you ever gonna learn? If I don't talk about pizza with somebody who makes pizza, how am I gonna know how to make pizza? You know what I mean? Um, so I think like that's the first thing. The second thing is if you ever see injustice happening, whether it's due to race or whatever, I feel like people just need to stand up um, and not cower and not just be like, well, that's not my problem. We live in a uh, democratic republic um, where people should know that's not just about them, but I feel like they don't. It's the complete opposite. Um, the third thing is if it does happen and you don't know what to do, like at least check on the person it's happening to and then be like, hey, like, what can I do? Like, how can I help? Just a simple question. If you don't know, like you ask. You're taught in school. If you don't know, you ask. Right. And it's the same thing in life. Um, so as much as like we want to do the legwork. You can't make a horse drink. You can bring it to the water, you can't make a drink. So I feel like people need to come and ask questions, have open dialogues, do their own research with how to handle situations, um, and even correct their own ignorance and microaggressions because they might have it and not even know, you know what I mean? So I think that's, those are like the three main things that people can do now and in the yeah, I'm kind of going to ride with that uh, that third point on just asking questions. Um, there's so many times when people want to know something about me or know something that I'm going through, but they're afraid to ask. And honestly, I'm an open book. Anybody who knows me knows you can ask me anything and I'll give you an honest answer. So if you do see me go through something and you want to know how it's affecting me or want to know how I'm handling, just ask me. I will tell you. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm a comfortable person as well. Like just like Brownie says, like just if you want to check up on me, ask me certain things, just so I don't feel like I'm alone, right? Um, I always want to be checked on. I always want to have a conversation with somebody about how I'm feeling or whatever I'm going through. I just want to get it off my chest because if you ball it up, it's just going to eat away at you. And I feel like I wish I could have had somebody at a younger age there for me to just talk about it so I can let off my chest um, just so it didn't eat away at me. I feel like black people in general are very open and honest with things. I'm not labeling every black person. Right. Like, everyone's different. But I feel like if people just come to us in the proper manner and like, hey, like I honestly have a question and I'm sorry if this offends you, but like, do you mind if I still ask you this question? And it has to do with like your skin or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'll be like, oh, cool, like ask. Right. And right. then if they ask, and I'll be like, first off, you shouldn't right. say this, you should say this. And like, yeah, I'm going to correct you, or I'm going to reproach you, but like, I understand that you don't know. But at least you're coming to me and asking, as opposed to like, judging me, and then just flying off of that, and then I'm sitting there like, what is going on? Right, you know? absolutely. I'd rather have someone come up to me in honest ignorance than someone who doesn't say anything at all. Like, if you want to know if all black people eat fried chicken, just ask. 
You know what I'm saying? Hey, yo, hold on, hold on, hold on. But at the same point, though, who don't like good chicken? Who don't like grape drink? Who don't like watermelon? Like these. Like me, though. I don't. Okay, well, you're a different one. Yeah, you're a different one. All I'm saying is the stuff that we're stereotypically known for for liking things. Yeah. A bunch of people like that stuff. A bunch of people. Yeah. Like yeah. Stuff. We just like good stuff. <laughs>